Hi, welcome to New School of Architecture and Design Construction Management Program. We are very pleased that you joined us today, taking your time to learn more about the undergraduate degree in construction management at New School of Architecture and Design. We hope you'll find this presentation interesting, and if you have any questions, please contact us and ask at any time. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Steve Matley. I am the Chair of Construction Management. I have an MBA from Chapman University, so my education is not in construction engineering or architecture, it's in business, but I've had a successful career in construction management for over 25 years. Um, I'm going to introduce you now to our co-host today. He is the former chair of the program and the founder of the program. He still teaches full-time for a new school in our program. This is George Welch. Well, greetings, and I appreciate the, the, the uh, introduction there, Steve. Um, I have a um, our Bachelor of Architecture, and I've been a licensed architect for uh, almost my entire career. Uh, I also was uh, heavily involved in construction, both from commercial to high-rise residential through large uh, recreational complexes as well. And I have been involved with New School since 2010 and have been uh, uh, involved in the CM program since its inception. So I really have uh, enjoyed being engaged in this and I'm really glad that Steve still allows me to teach in the program. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to share a quick video with you on an overview of the program and then we'll be back to give you some more detail on the program. The construction management program at the New School of Architecture and Design has been designed from the beginning to be an integrative program because of the existence of the architecture program, which will allow construction management students to take classes with architecture students, and even to learn a little bit about design. What we do differently at the New School of Architecture and Design is we teach not only the management aspect of construction management, but also leadership. The master builder today is actually a team of people. You have designers who already design the building, and you have laborers. Well, the construction manager is the person in between. Our buildings are complex and one needs to be able to work on a team and trust other people. Being able to motivate people, being able to set a new direction or to imagine a new future, those are the types of things that are extremely important for the successful construction manager. Our lab is the city of San Diego and we are within walking distance of major construction projects all the time. You know, there's so many things to see in the East Village area here where we have construction going on continuously. And it allows us to work with both our construction management and architecture students almost in a laboratory type setting where we can visit job sites and look at the opportunities to see what we're learning in the classroom and how it applies in real world. Our skyline is one of the most beautiful skylines, and that's what you get to look at every day. In the video, we should talk a little bit about San Diego and uh, why the location of New School in San Diego is so critical with our ability to use the surrounding community as part of our laboratory. Steve, why don't you carry, take it from there? Well, you know, the f field trips, and when I say field trips, I mean walking across the street or down the block are an integral part of many of the classes we teach. And I know that in the, in the classes that I teach, and I know most of other teachers do, we try to get out into the field as much as possible because it's right there. And it's so much easier to walk to a site and look at something than it is trying to understand it from a YouTube video or a textbook or photos or a slideshow. And we get to talk and meet the people on the job site and, and the students get to ask them questions. What do you do every day? What do you like about this? What are the challenges? What else could I do in this industry? I want to I want to look at besides just looking at the technical stuff because the field trips are great for learning materials methods how things go together but more so they get to talk to people on the team our program really focuses on team building decision making and leadership which are key key skills and it differentiates us in a lot of ways from other programs and we'll get into that um, in a few more minutes on how important that is but you're still going to learn the essential construction management skills 
estimating, scheduling, how to manage contracts, doing the meetings, understanding how uh, team dynamics work, understand the, uh, the budgets, accounting, cash flows, all the different parts and pieces, materials and methods. And it's going to be presented to you in a environment where other disciplines like architecture, interior design, product design are also interacting with us. So you'll learn more than from more than just the construction side. And we're gonna, we, we, we do learn computer applications, but we're not focused on that. If your intent is to learn the latest and greatest software applications, a four year degree program is probably not the right place because by the time you graduate, most of what you learn is going to be obsolete. So what we focus on is we use the latest and greatest technology, but we teach you the theories, practices behind it and how to use any tool as it comes up by understanding what's going on. As I tell my students, you've always got to be smarter than the machine. And I, George, I know you've had some experience with some students that have, um, have, have expressed to you that the applications are great tools, but not necessarily what they can use. Right. We had, um, very early on, I had a student who was from Uganda who uh, was concerned that we were spending time learning these computer applications. And I questioned uh, Zena why he was concerned. And he said, well, when I go home, I won't have those available to me. And I said, well, you can always take a laptop with you. And he says, you don't understand. When I go back to my home, I'm not going to have electricity understanding the knowledge and the process that it takes to do the key skills in our industry are more important than knowing what the software is. Because right. by the way, we could pick one software and teach you very, very seriously on it. But when you go out and get a job, you need to be able to use the software that your employer has. Most often they're not going to ask a new hire what software they should, uh, should select. Right, and it's competitive out there. And, and again, it, software changes. Um, when I first learned Microsoft Project, uh, that version is nothing like what's going on right now in the industry. And we do use advanced scheduling software. However, our students start with post-it notes and butcher paper and, and highlighters, and they, they start by scheduling you know, with sticky notes. That, if you understand that process, then the computer, it just makes it easier to do it. Also, our faculty. Our faculty come from the industry. We do not hire faculty because of all the academic accolades they have and letters behind their name and publications. That's all good stuff. And some of our faculty may have that. But what's important to us is that they are teaching in their afternoon or evening class what they did today in the industry for one of the major companies working on a project right now. They can talk to the students based upon what is going on in the industry right now, today, in multiple sectors, heavy civil, residential, um, commercial sector. We, they, they know what is the challenges and they know what the um, future is coming in the industry and they can share that with the students. And what's great is some of our faculty have recruited students right out of the classroom to work for their company. Yeah, it's been really fantastic as, as our, our faculty teach the, um, not necessarily the specialty, but the area uh, that they concentrate on in their professional life. So we've had the uh, lead estimator at one of the major firms teach our estimating class. We've had um, a, um, one of the top green building uh, lead instructors who has also taught our green building classes. Yeah, so, the regional safety director from one of the biggest contracting companies in the world who's teaching our safety class. We have right. the BIM director for one of the, an international company teaching our BIM classes. Right. So all of those elements of being in an active community that constructs, uh, where construction is uh, very active, we have the opportunity to attract industry professionals that can teach in our classrooms. That's right. And, and we try to keep it as hands-on and project-oriented as possible. Now, there is a time and a place for traditional lectures and classroom style, but we try to minimize that as much as possible. Our intent is not to sit you down in a room for four years and talk at you. It is to get you as much as possible active in doing estimates, creating schedules, working through contract docs, working in team environment, putting virtual projects together, um, understanding how to apply what you're learning into the real world. And we'll get deeper into that, into some ways that we have very successfully um, 
allowed our students to uh, present what they have to the actual industry. Um, but first, real quick overview, I don't want to get too deep into this, but there are skills that you need to learn. In addition to the leadership and decision making, there are basic skills that everybody needs to know if you're going to be successful in this industry. There are technical skills, we mentioned some of those already, and there are professional skills. We teach both. There are many programs that really focus just on the technical skills and they're really more concerned about can you do an estimate, can you do a schedule. We, we work on that too. You will be at least mentally proficient in that when you graduate. But we really try to highlight professional side of things. Can you lead a group? Do you have good interpersonal skills? Can you do public presentations without breaking a sweat? Can you, can you lead a team doing a proposal presentation to get that job worth tens of millions of dollars? Can you understand the 30,000 foot view of managing a project and all the different parts and pieces that come in? Um, that, that is uh, a big area of focus in our program. And all of these skills uh, can be learned in many different places, but our focus is in the vertical building environment. We are not necessarily a horizontal building um, school where most of the engineering schools are focused on that, where it's quantity takeoff and, uh, and quantity measurement. Ours are more focused on building the commercial and the residential and the larger projects that provide housing and places for people to shop and work and be educated. So, and having, yeah, sorry, having said that, we do have a course in heavy civil construction because you need to understand that basics. For example, I was the VP of a home builder at one time. Did you know that the home building wasn't the major part of what we did? It was the civil side that we did. In order to build the homes, we had to build the neighborhood first and that meant we had to understand that part of it. Now. Most of that was done by other professionals and consultants. That's where the team building, that's where the leadership comes in. But we have to understand that part of it. So we do cover that within the program, at least on a rudimentary level, so you understand what's going on. So let's talk about a little bit about what we do to try and differentiate our program. Um, and, and first and foremost, we are a construction management program born of an architecture school. Now I have worked, um, in a construction management program that was born out of an engineering school. And I have worked in a construction program that was born out of a business school. Uh, we, this one is born out of an architecture school. And different construction management programs will have different flavors. One thing to remember as a construction manager, you are not going to be designing, engineering, stamping, or calculating anything you're not allowed to. You need to understand what they're doing so you can raise red flags. You need to be able to ask intelligent questions. You need to make, need to make sure your consultants don't make mistakes that can easily be caught. At the same time, you don't need to understand the project as an engineer understands the project. You need to understand it as a construction manager. So we take an interdisciplinary approach, a transdisciplinary approach where we, you are in the classroom with students that are taking architecture, students that are taking interior design, students that are taking product design. Remember, every material we use, especially finishes, are products that were designed by somebody. Graphic design. Um, you will have interaction with these other types of students in your classes on a regular basis. Many of them are taking the construction management minor, which is why they're in some of your classes learning construction skills. And we encourage our students to take minors in the other disciplines if they can fit those into their schedule. It makes you more valuable. I wanted to follow up on Steve's uh, comment there about that you don't need to have in-depth knowledge of each of these topics that we talked about uh, for the technical skills. And uh, the best metaphor I found for this is that uh, if you go to um, a concert over at Copley Symphony Hall and watch the symphony, the conductor who shows up there with his baton does not know how to play each instrument. He knows what each instrument is capable of doing, but his job is to bring all of those instruments together to follow the plan, the score in that case, and to create the beautiful music. Our job as a construction manager is to be that orchestra of all of the trades, to follow the score, the plans that the architects and engineers have prepared. 
Yes. And again, we've already talked about the experience of our faculty. They're in the trenches every day doing this. Uh, for the for, for their main work and they come to the school and they give of their time and their experience and their education for the students to help train up the next generation of leaders in our industry. Um, and this leads to the next item, which is a very high placement rate for our graduates. Now construction, uh, construction management as a uh, career tends to pay on the higher end of the scale. Um, and if you go look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics websites, you can compare up the prices. Remember, those are national averages. We're in Southern California where the rates are a little bit higher, as is the living expenses. But our job placement rates are very high. And how high have they been for this program in the last few years? Well, I'll give you a hint. On a percentage basis, there's three digits in that. Okay? We've had 100% of the students that are eligible to work, because uh, we do have some international students that are not, um, of the eligible students have jobs. And in fact, one of our biggest challenges is working around students working schedules because most of them are already working in the industry within their third year at the school. And, and the companies are very good at working around it, but it does, it can create um, some um, I have scheduling issues for some of our students, but they work around it and we are very sensitive to that and make sure that the employers are understanding school is the top priority. At the same time, we greatly appreciate it. And remember, many of our faculty are working for these companies where our students are interning and working. You know, before we talk about how uh, accomplished our alumni are, let me just take a tie into that issue that Steve brought up about how many of our students get internships in their third and fourth years. And that really ties into this national recognized award-winning student competition team. That's right. We have been a, a school that for um, one of the last seven years, we've participated at the Associated Schools of Construction uh, student competition in Reno, Nevada. And we've done extremely well there. I think we've taken three first places out of seven years. And, um, and Steve, there's been other competitions we've done well in as well. Yeah, we, uh, other... we've participated in the Design Build Institute competition. And in this uh, last year, our team out of uh, 52 co teams from colleges and universities across the nation, our team took third place. And interestingly enough, the uh, separation in points between the first place and the second place team was, I don't know percentage, right? It was, it was 20 points out of 1,000 was how close that competition was. And, and they were actually recognized on the stage in front of the national conference. And students came back with um, potential job offers in their hand where um, industry professionals came up to them and said, I need your information, we need to talk. Um, how, how many years do you have left in school and how do you feel about working for our company? And this happens both at the regional competition that we do uh, with the ASC and the national competition with DBIA. And we actually had a group um, a year ago that went out to the National Association of Home Builders, which is the lar largest construction and design related conference in the country. And they competed on a, in a platform there. And that was their first time there. Um, they didn't place, but they did fairly well. They, they came in, you know, pretty well for a first time attempt. And again, that was on, that's the residential side. So our students have done very, very well. And even that team made good connections with industry employers. And this leads to our accomplished alumni. And we don't wanna you know, call out specific names, but we will tell you that we have alums working in great positions with some of the best companies in the country. Um, we have a student that graduated what, four or five years ago that was already in the project management level position working for one of, actually internet, one of the international companies. Uh, we have several young ladies that have come through our program. We've been very proud of the fact that traditionally we've had about twice the national average of females in our program is what's normal. And, and all of them have gone on to work for companies and been extremely successful. One of them actually was sent to Europe to do training for her company uh, last summer. Uh, being recognized as, as um, an accomplished leader in her company already. And she's only been graduated a few years out. Um, um, our students have worked on high rise hotels. They have worked on major housing projects. Um, our students have uh, worked on um, universities. Uh, so they've, they've been out there working lots of different projects uh, for they say, the biggest names in the industry. And several of them have been working on uh, major hospital construction that has been right. going on in San Diego. Uh, we've we've had, uh, I think, three major 
hospitals that have been built, all of which have had our uh, students as interns, and then many of them continuing on after graduation to be uh, construction managers, whether field engineers or office engineers for those companies. And interestingly enough, the picture you're seeing here of this crane, that, that, that site right now is a 36 story building housing. One of our young ladies who graduated just in the last year or two is actually on that site and she's heading up the turnover process uh, to the property managers on that project as we speak. Um, again, we teach, we try, we try to focus on teaching skills so you can use the tools that have yet to be created. Things that aren't even in the industry yet, but you'll be prepared for them because you understand the knowledge and practices behind them. So what can you do in the industry? A lot of different things. This is a very small list out of little, uh, probably a hundred different things you could do in this industry. You work as a CM, as a project manager, a project engineer, a field engineer, uh, project controls, estimator, schedule. You can do procurement. You can do, um, uh, that's, that's like a purchasing agent. You can be, you can actually, I know uh, some of the uh, students that have worked for companies where they are the sales rep for products uh, out in the industry. Um, marketing, business development. There is just a wide world available um, in this industry. And we tend to think construction management is a small little niche, but when you look at how many companies and types of companies, the different categories of companies, there's trade contractors, general contractors, CM firms, there's residential, there's infrastructure, marine construction, industrial construction. Uh, there's, it's just a wide world out there that's available. And you're really not limited by anything other than your own imagination and your own passions to do what you want to do. I think it's important for you to realize too that while a lot of what we've talked about is the general contractors, the people who are managing the overall project, every one of the firms, every one of the trades that works on the site has job opportunities for the same sets of skills. Because each, I mean, when you look at the plumber who's going to do that 35 story high rise, they have to manage just the plumbing portion of the project but they have to manage it from estimating to logistics, to procurement, to trades, to labor, to uh, getting material in place, to finishing. All of those same elements are available in all of the specialty trades as well. That's right. And, and I've actually worked, I worked um, doing NAFAC projects for a fire life safety contractor. And that's a very small niche, a little small piece of the project. And let me tell you what, it's a lot of work. Uh, we had a you know full crew out there working. We did 180 buildings on one base. Um, it's a it's a lot of work to do. So just that small niche, and think about everything else that went into those buildings besides just sprinklers and alarms. So and again, I've done house I've done the the housing as a VP of a home builder, and I have worked as a CM doing high rises, schools, houses of worship. Um, infrastructure projects, many different things. And I, George has a huge background as well, too. So where do our a student and alumni end up working? Well, here is a partial list of the companies where our alumni are currently working right now. And, and you'll see that, you'll notice a couple of universities on there. They, they're not there as graduate students transferred. No, they are working for the universities in their facilities departments managing the contracts. So they're, they're, they, you may not even consider that as a place that you can go. You can work for large developer and property management companies um, managing their construction programs, large school districts, all that's necessary out there. You know, we've talked about what your experience will be like during your four years there, but I've asked a lot of these firms, tell me what you think of our graduates. And one of the firms said, you know, there's three really unique things about a new school graduate. Number one, they know how to present. Number two, they know how to break a problem down. And number three, they never stop asking why, which is part of that whole issue of lifelong learning that we promote. That's right. And understand, four years of education, and it's not going to be easy. It's a lot of work, but it's very fulfilling. Four years will give you about a thimble full of knowledge. And there is an infinite ocean available out there in this industry once you get out there. So part of what we're doing is teaching you the basics to learn. One of the best things we teach you is how much you're not going to know by the time you graduate so you can keep on learning. Because no matter where you go, and every time you, if a company changes, a new project comes up, you've got to learn things all over again because every 
project and every company is unique and different. Every contract is different. So that is what we focus on. Please, um, you can go to our website, newschoolarc.edu, check out the catalog, check out our programs, check out our career service department, placement rates, it's all there available to you. Um, please contact an enrollment advisor if you have any questions whatsoever. The number is on here and you can actually ask them if, if you wanna to talk to us, just ask them, they'll give you our contact information. We're happy to answer emails or phone calls from any prospective student. Enrollment at newschoolarc.edu can get you started and they'll answer all your questions on what does it cost how long does it take? How do I qualify? Um, what's available to me? A lot of questions to ask and, and please go to the experts to ask that and if any questions on the content of this program, don't hesitate to ask George or myself. We're here for you.